Good morning. We are celebrating this Sunday, fifth Pentecost, fifth Sunday after Pentecost, excuse me. Um, the pastor obviously is not here. I am filling in for him, and we wish him well. In today's service, we're going to acquaint ourselves with some of the renowned church musicians who were included on the list of commemorations of the church. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Clap your hands, all people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared. A great king over all the earth. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. He is highly exalted. You may be seated. The first hymn writer of the Christian church that can be commemorated by name is Ambrose of Milan, one of the great early doctors of the church. Ambrose's birth is given as AD 340 in Trier, now a city in, the West, in Western Germany. His life and ministry took place further south in Europe. In the waning years of the Roman Empire, Ambrose was chosen to be the governor of Liguria and Amalano, now the area of Milan in Northern Italy popular with the local people. He was acclaimed as Bishop of Milan on December 7th of 374, when he was 35 years old. Even though he had not yet been baptized, the people of Milan had chosen well. Ambrose served as a dedicated church leader and skillful bishop. St. Ambrose is on the list of commemorations for December 7th. Among the gifts, Ambrose left to the church and its people is a wealth of hymns. Among those still sung today are the morning hymn, O Splendor of God's Glory Bright, and the evening hymn, O Blessed Light of Trinity. Together we sing stanzas of Savior of Our Nation Come, a hymn written by Ambrose in the fourth century. This hymn has long been associated with the Advent season of the church year. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our nation, salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let, let us make, make a joyful noise to him with song and praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, the heights, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. For he is our God, and we are his people, the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. To 
today if you hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts, as with Mirabel, as in the day of Massa in the wilderness. When your fathers put me to the test and put me to proof, though they had seen my work, for 40 years I loathed the generation and said, they, they are, are people, people who go astray in their heart, and they are not those ways. Therefore, I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory be to the, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A dominant European leader in the first half of the 12th century, St. Bernard, is remembered for his faithful witness in word and deed and in music. Born into a noble Bulgarian family of 1090, Bernard chose to live in the monastery at the age of 22. His life, now shaped by prayers and music of the monastery, he was sent to form a new monastic house at Clairvaux. Bernard's energetic and devoted work resulted in an expansion of mission and service in the French monastery, and eventually led to the founding of 68 more monastery centers of worship and learning. Known for his preaching, his political abilities, and his charity, Bernard is commemorated by the church on August 19th. As a writer of hymn texts, Bernard used his gift of finding beauty of expression in words to enrich the life of the church. One of the most honored of lectern hymns is his beautiful text that we sing as, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded. Another hymn text linked to Bernard is, O Jesus, King Most Wonderful. It is what is called a cento, a collection of new stanzas from a much longer work, the poem, from which the four stanzas of the hymn came originally was comprised of 42 stanzas. <laughs> One of the most notable of Lutheran hymn writers is Paul Gerhardt, whose day of commemoration is October 26th. During his life, which spanned much of the 17th century, Gerhardt faced many personal challenges and theological trials. He lived through wars and plagues and fierce ecclesiastical battles. He buried his wife and all but one of his five children. Yet, through all of his difficulties, he maintained a steady spirit. In all circumstances, he continued to comfort people through his poetry. Gerhardt's texts are sung not only in his native Germany, but around the world. Paul Gerhardt knew the blessing of music in the life of the Christian. In one hymn text, he wrote, I will sing my maker's praises, and in him most joyful be. For in all things I see traces of his tender love for me. Gerhardt hymn, Awake My Heart with Gladness, reflects the peace that Christ's resurrection offers in the world of gloom and sadness.
The Old Testament reading is from Leviticus chapter 19. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not, you shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely. And so profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the death or put a stumbling block before the blind. But you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge, against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Collis, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing as it does among you. Since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth, just as you learned it from Epirus, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among the robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by, the chance, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. 
He went to him and bound up his wounds and pouring oil on and wine on them. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. The third article of the Catechism, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot reason or strength. Believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, for come to him by the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified me and kept me in true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus in one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me from the dead and now he turns life to me and all believers in Christ. This, this is most Lord. certainly true. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God and in the gratitude of the multitude of loved ones' birthdays by the Rowald and Leary families. The eternal light is lit to the glory of God by Jackie Sancho in memory of her brother and sister, Samuel and Sarah Hoskins. On our prayer list with this week, we pray for Kathy, Tammy, Fred, Janice Rolls, Susan Cosgrove, Audrey, Dawn F., Russ, Marguerite, and Susan Haig, and family at the death of her mother. Please rise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
We pray for the whole Christian church everywhere and for our worship that we be blessed by the words and music gifted to us by God's servants in previous times as well as in our own generation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. We pray for those with responsibility for leadership in government throughout the world and locally that we may know times of peace and safety. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. We pray for those who make our lives secure, including those in military service and our local first responders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. We pray for all those in need of our petitions at this time, the hospitalized, the homebound, the unemployed, the underemployed, and those dealing with personal or family concerns. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Gracious God, you who rejoices over your people with singing, hear, our, hear now our prayers of your people and grant that your presence attend us all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. Who great is his steadfast love towards us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. April 24th is the day on the list of commemorations when Johann Walter is remembered, called first cantor of the Lutheran Church by some. Walter is remembered for his musical collaboration with Martin Luther. In 1524, he published his Geschlecht Gansicht Buchlin, a collection of 43 sacred pieces arranged according to the church year that served as a model for subsequent church hymnals. The music and musical publications of Walter had great influence on the development of singing in Lutheran congregations in Germany and elsewhere in Europe leading to the lasting reputation of the Lutheran Church as the Singing Church. At one time, after having enjoyed some singing in the, house, in the home of a friend, Dr. Martin Luther expressed his devotion to music in this way. Music is an outstanding gift of God, and next to theology, I would not want to give up my slight knowledge of music for a great consideration. And youth should be taught this art, for it makes fine, skillful people. Johann Walter, Luther's friend, shaped his views on God's gift of music and gifted the church with both texts and tunes. His hymn, The Bridegroom Soon Will Call Us, is included in our hymnal, though not as easy to sing. Instead, we will sing a hymn written by the great German reformer, Dr. Martin Luther. Martin Luther is commemorated on February 18th, not as a hymn writer, but as doctor and confessor. But his hymns are well known and appreciated.
Lord God, you called your servants to venture to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold to what is good. Return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you. Amen. Thank you.